Hey, buddy. We got Mr. Boots the cat. Right? Confederate cat. He's eating his meat. Yum, yum. Right, buddy? He okay? He's sleeping in his little house. And, uh, we got some boots over here. This is, uh, not sure if they're made in China or not. Probably. Ridiculously low price. I forgot what they were. They were way under 30 bucks with a discount and all that crap. Um, insulated. And I'm um, supporting this place. C.H. Cadell's because they sell Confederate flag stuff. And, uh, most of that, of course. But here you got, um, uh, look like pretty good. Good, good sole on them. 100% waterproof. And, uh, a lot of insulation. So, probably, I'm assuming, Thermo block insulation, 100% waterproof, real easy to put on. So, look like they're pretty. And I heard they run a little bit big, so that's a tread pattern on the bottom. Not too bad, which is better than the Vibram lug soles because you ever see those Vibram lug soles? They clog right the hell up. They're good in hard dirt. <laughs> they're not really great for a lot of other things, but. Uh, you know, even though I'm assuming they're made in China, or someplace like that, I'm supporting this guy because he's a Georgia vendor that is, you know, anybody's got the balls to sell freaking Confederate flag stuff, it's worth it to me, he's a good guy, you know. But, um, for the price, I don't know, I forgot I got a bunch of stuff besides this, all delivered for 43 bucks. I think these were... Well under thirty bucks. Well under thirty bucks. And you're looking at, you know, the type of eyelets you got them, you know, the round laces, the pull up the pull up tabs, the well padded collar. It's uh it's a thick tread on the bottom. Um they're rubberized and this is probably a vinyl on the top with a slight amount of leather right here. This is suede, I think. I think this is vinyl over here, and this is some kind of uh, suede in the insert. But, and you got a, a pretty strong heel protector back here, too. So, you know, really what you need for cold weather, if you're into cold weather, if I ever meant in cold weather. So I figured I'd pick them up. Since 1953, Rothko has been supplying the world with quality outdoor. Well, maybe it's pretty good. It's probably a good design. In other words, USA design. And um, I'm assuming it's got to be made in China, man. There's no freaking way it could be made here for that kind of price. I'm assuming. Made in China, yep, right there, made in China. So, I figured that, I figured that. But, the way I'm looking at it too, might as well get that kind of stuff before, you know, the exchange rate changes with China, because I think it's gonna change with China. And just like Japanese goods, got quite a bit more expensive when the end rate changed. China's like the last place really you're gonna be buying in other words, this, that's going to be the end of the, um, what do you call it, uh, you know, the life, uh, what do you call that again, the standard of living in the United States, because standard of living in the United States has been propped up by cheap foreign labor. Actually, our standard of living has been going down. If everything we had to buy was made in the United States, like it used to be back in the 50s and early 60s, um, and the 40s, of course, well, guess what would happen? You know, the consumer price index would go right through the roof. But one thing that's keeping down the consumer price index, like in clothes is part of it, shoes, is the fact that you're buying um, goods made in foreign countries that, where the labor's dirt cheap. And I think that's one thing that's going to change. I don't think the dollar itself is going to collapse or anything like that, but you're going to see this. One thing I think you're going to see a major change as Trump... Um, goes ahead and uh, changes policies with China, which I'm not disagreeing with. I think we ought to make our own stuff here. Um, you're going to actually see an exchange rate change 
between the United States and China. And that, in effect, is going to make goods a lot more expensive here that you actually need. So it's a cold weather hiking boot, item number 5059. Leather, it's a leather upper. I thought it was a, okay. It seems like it, it did say a leather upper, but this, I guess it is. I guess it is. It almost feels like a plastic. It is a leather upper. It did say a leather upper when I thought, I thought when I bought them. Durable suede leather uppers. Comfortable protection, EVA midsole. All seams are taped to ensure waterproofing. Thermal rubber outsoles, so stay pliable under wet and snowy conditions. That's what I was. I thought it was leather uppers and um, rubber bottoms. So, so this looks uh, looks pretty good, man. But they run a little bit big, so you know if you. You want to order your regular size, so you can always put some uh, thicker socks on there, right? Right, Mr. Boots? You okay, buddy? Huh? You all right? You want some more treat? You want some treats in your little thing? I'll give them to you right now, okay? You hear something? You, got, you heard him? You open the, the thing up? Here, buddy. He'll eat the rest of his food now. Watch. Temptations. Right? mix it in his food he'll eat the rest of his food now which has vitamins in it so getting back to the boots yeah these look like a good deal I misspoke at first because I know I remember I read that they were leather uppers rubber bottoms and I think that's a good combination because you know the bottom is like what really takes all the weather and you still want them breathable and it's got the thermal insulation so it's a, it's from a company that knows how to design boots but they ship the labor off to China right yeah, what else is new? But you know, if you're gonna, if there was the labor was here, well, guess what? Guess what? The labor it would be hundred dollar boots, right? <laughs> Eighty dollar boots or some shit. So get them while you can. That's the way I look at it. Uh, good deal though. Good deal. And you can reinforce ribs up here in the front. They're pretty solid. And you know, the only if you ever have a, a rip or tear in these boots, in the rubber. Shoe goo. Chemically clean them, put some shoe goo on them, you'll be good to go, and it'll be good, good to go for many years afterwards. And these things you can, you know, theoretically, as long as they're not like dry rotted or something like that, you can re-sole them in a lot of ways too, just with, um, you know, the actual glue and the rubber fi fibrum soles they sell, which I would use the jungle pattern if they ever wore down. But, uh, I don't think I'm going to be using them that much, but uh, these are great like slip-ons too because if you don't have them laced up too tight, you can just slip your feet in there and, uh, you know, kind of use them as like uh, real quick if you got to go outdoors or something, you put them on real quick. And uh, you walk around, it. Easily. this is a good tread pattern for the snow actually because I found the Vibram Yellow Tag Sole. It, it clogs right up in the snow and also in um, the mud. The jungle pattern works better, or a pattern like this, because they're not they're not too 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 aggressive, where they just hold all the dirt or snow or ice. These are actually a pretty good uh, way to you know have them set up. So anyway, good deal. I think I think they're about twenty five bucks delivered, roughly because I got some I got some gloves I got some bumper stickers and crap and the whole deal was forty three dollars so it's dirt cheap 